So, UCF Death Knights versus first pick Gazla GG AFK. First pick Gazla won the coin toss, which means they were able to pick the map, which brings us to Dragonshire. Forces UCF Death Knights into the first pick. I believe the map bans were Battlefield of Eternity and Volskaya Industries. So, um, I'm just don't know if those were targeted bans on the other teams that want to play them or that those teams just don't like to play them, period. So, uh, but whatever, it, whatever be the case, brings us to Dragonshire. One of those maps where the solo laner is kind of a pretty big deal because controlling that top lane trying means that your bottom lane four man or three man however you do your rotations can play whatever game they want whether they rotate to giants they don't have to worry about uh the possible dragon knight early um so the solo laner is pretty important but with that being said there are still the hot pick items the maev the garrosh the diablo the stukov um heroes like that that will just cause enough disruption uh, to win that four man and allow your team to kind of rotate up to the solo lane. Picks are coming out really quickly. Garrosh immediately banned, Maev counter banned, and the Hanzo first pick. Looking for that poke damage right away. Uh, UCF Death Knights on the left have actually already played one game today. They actually just got done with the game by about 30 minutes ago. Um, they didn't play Hanzo any of those in, in the, either of those two matches, so but they decided to pick it up here. So first pick Gazlo GG. I'm going to be a little bit upset if they don't pick some type of off meta hero, you know, like the Gazlo. I, I've I've heard that they play Asmodan. They played. They have played Gazlo before um, in a couple matches so far, I think. Or are they just going to play standard meta and you know possibly pick up the Malfurion and um, Diablo here, especially since the Garrosh is banned. They, I've got half of them right. They pick up the Diablo Grey Main. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Grey Main first picks in the first rounds today, uh, so far tonight. And I mean, honestly, it's quite surprising. Grey Main kind of fell off a little bit there with the uh, with Hanzo rising up, the importance of Hanzo and the importance of Phoenix and um, <laughs> won't let him play Gazla because of one loss. I say don't listen to him. But yeah, there has been a lot of Grey Mane. Uh, he he does have really good follow up for any type of uh, damage. Go for the throat it gives you a great execution on to finish off some targets if you have some poke damage on them. So the next two picks, I would imagine we pick. So they are going to pick up Stukov. Let's see if they go with the ETC here or if they're going to go with the Joanna. Kind of get help help some of their wave clear. Help some of their. Um, Defense control on the shrine. Joanna is really good for sitting on top of a shrine if you're trying to delay them. Like let's say you're just your team is trying to pick up the dragon. Joanna can just sit there and um, using her trait just to delay them capping the shrine enough for your team to kind of cap the dragon. He'll literally play with duct tape over his meme after I play Gazzo. So, the Stukov Tychus. Tychus, the, kind of a pretty quick pickup versus the Diablo. Um, I know with UCF Death Knight's last game, they were playing the Tychus, and he was doing, he was making Diablo pretty scared. It ended up not working out for him, but I know Tychus definitely allowed uh, Diablo to play passive in the early game. The only problem there is that if first pick Gazzo do get to like level 16 level the, you know, the late game with any significant type of even or lead it puts tychus in a super dangerous position just because of his auto attack range since ucf has already picked their stukov deciding to ban out the malfurion kind of the other top healer right now with stukov and malfurion at the top two i actually really like lucio on this map um, the rotations and again sitting back kind of annoys those pressure points a lot and with the speed boost uh, the, the lanes are so open that Lucio with his run speed allows for a lot of chase or retreat Decker Kane is the new hero out today but he is banned within NGS for the next two weeks uh, they do follow the, the, and, and the HGC rules So next two bands, they probably, I don't think I want to see them pick up their solo laner here unless they have a limited solo laner pool uh, just because there are two picks available for 
UCF left to kind of counter the solo lane. And like I said before, solo lane is so important. But with that said, they pick up the Asmodan. Asmodan actually doing a pretty good job on this map. Hopefully they don't use him for the solo lane. Brightwing giving him some global pressure so that way their solo laner can at least be aggressive and then have Brightwing teleport up to him, get a sheep, and kind of just shift that push. Let's say uh, UCF has control of the bot lane and the top lane, then Brightwing can teleport top to help control the top lane. Uh, really, first pick Gazlo is going to be looking to delay, delay, delay with this Asphodane. They want to get him stacked if they go Siege and Wrath or if he goes Taste for Blood. They're going to be looking to get Asphodane stacked here. He does really well with burning down the dragon if they do end up losing the first one with his laser. But Stukov is kind of one of the better healers against Asmodan. He spreads his... If he gets the one good spread, he's able to... You know, kind of keep up his healing against Azadan pretty well, even without using his trait. The Orc, I think, is a very solid pick here with the Diablo Azadan. Uh, you got Drain Hope on two very fat and two very high health pool heroes. Entombing on what? Kel'Thuzad. The Kel'Thuzad with the Azadan with a Diablo. I don't know if I like that too much, Kel only just because Kel'Thuzad is not the best follow-up against the Diablo. They have, do have the gray main there, but uh, it's, ew, it's tough. Uh, it's basically going to be Kel'Thuzad kind of playing on his own to see how much value he gets. So that actually tells me that they're at, they are going to put Azunan in the solo lane. Ooh, I don't believe that's going to work out too well, but we're going to see how it goes. Yeah, that long team name wrecking production value. I agree. Freaking agree. I'm just going to switch to this scene. So let me know in chat what you guys think of these drafts. Uh, so far, I am on the side of UCF Death Knights only because they picked the Kel'Thuzad on first pick Gazlo GG. I would be okay with first pick Gazlo if they went to somebody else, like maybe a Sonya with Azadan to kind of give wave clear for Azadan. Um, she can hold the top lane. She can... They're just going to have a tough time controlling both lanes unless Kel'Thuzad is a god and he just self-chains, combos a bunch of people. Then they're going to have a tough time winning that lane because they're just not going to have... They're not, not going to have a good enough poke damage or even sustain damage or even burst damage if they don't hit the combo. So... See how it plays out for him. All right, game number one on Dragonshire. On the left hand side, we got UCF Death Knights. We got Red Conscript on the Tychus, Rook on the Joanna, Kodiaks on the Leoric. Oh, my game is lagging out a little bit. Jaxter on the Stukov, Snipe on the Hanzo, doing some snipes. On the right hand side, we got first pick Gazlo GG AFK. Urzik on the Diablo, Banshee on, Banshee on the Kel'Thuzad, Cass on the Azadan, Deity Minion on the Brightwing, kind of, that's pretty good. I feel like that she is a Deity Minion. And Absolved on the Grey Mane. So, Azadan has yet to pick up his level 1. We don't know if he's going to go Taste for Blood or Siege and Wrath. Maybe he goes laser? I can't... He does go laser. So they're going to be looking... Maybe they're going to just gonna look to do Asmodan Cancer pushes with the laser. Uh, he is going to burn down the dragon pretty quickly. What is happening here? I just... What is happening? This is... Wait. So the team's watching him. The wall's going down. They know he's over here. They're not rotating over to him. Just the Leoric is. I, wait, so what is he doing there? What was the purpose of that? Just, I think that was probably just to scare off the rest of UCF Death Knights to kind of interrupt their rotations, force them to say, hey, oh my god, we need to deal with that. We need to deal with Azadan. But UCF had nothing about that. And Leoric is just going to have a field day with this. Look, he's just have Drain Hope available right now. There it is. That, Azadan's dead. Ooh, Leoric almost counter died. With the uh, wall. Tychus obliterating that Diablo. And he's going to go down as well. One of the scary parts. Yeah. 
There's some. I feel like there's probably just some memeing going on between this uh, the Kel the Azadam pick. But you know you don't have a name like first pick as a GGAFK without doing something crazy. Kalthazad is does have five stacks right now, so he's gotten some combos. But this is going to be the spot where it's I. It's going to be tough for UCF to really hold this point, or for Gazla to really hold this point for too long. Stukov is actually going to sit on the point, not going to be too scared. Diablo is sitting in the middle, make sure they're not missing any soak. Which is smart at this point. Ooh, Kel'Thuzad is going to get ch jumped on. Nice combos, hitting three, two um, four more members. One more auto attack, but the Silence is actually able to finish off the kill on the... Wow, Azadan lasers out Leoric. I mean, the, this Azran is going to be... So now he's got the heal on him. So I wonder if that actually solos the Leoric now. I have to try to pay attention to this. We're going to look for the minimap to make sure we can watch for this uh, Azran actually going in to fight the Leoric. Good silence on the Diablo. Hanzo st sticking with his poke damage. So, Lois, the two laser bros... Asmin is winning this quite easily, actually. Oh my gosh. He, he like Lyric is gonna be on his toes now. He knows that he does not win that straight up. He was trying real hard. Lyric probably wins that if he took the different level one, but uh, you know, you don't know that. You're you're going for the team fight. Lyric barely or bottom Stukov barely takes the bottom dragon before Grey Mage able to take the middle. Now we're going to see Diablo rotate to bottom, make sure that they can't cap. I think they do stop it in time. Yeah, they do. I mean, if nothing else, the Leoric kills, or the kills on Leoric are interrupting the rotations from ECUCF quite a bit. Ooh, yeah, see, Leoric knows he can't win this. That was a very interesting solo lane. I really like... This play from Gazlo to take the Knights, knowing that they actually now have full control of the top lane with the Azunan laser build. So this is going to put that much more pressure on the Stukov. Actually going to force a Hans the... Sorry, a lot more pressure on the Leoric, forcing the Stukov to rotate up. That silence with the Stukov, now Greyman coming in. Actually should be turning onto the Stukov, there you go. Full control of the map for Gazla right now. I mean, at this point, since nobody's dead, there's no reason that they're going to want to focus or force a, a dragon. Just because it's hard to really take an early dragon with Death Timer so low. So, Death Knight's smartly just going to get value elsewhere. I keep paying attention to this Kel'Thuzad. There's one he can, I think change was just used, so he doesn't have available there. It's coming up. He's looking for that combo. Ends up not needing to use it. I mean, this top lane is having a heck of a time. Knife combo onto the Hanzo. Using the sheep. He should just jump away, but I don't think he needs to. The th rotation of the... Sorry, I'm missing all these views, but the rotation on to the Azunan getting that kill. But the combo kill on the Hanzo allows them to take the dragon because they were not able to get onto the point top far early enough. Hey, Ember. So, first dragon, a pretty early dragon, sub six minutes, going to, to uh, first bit Gazo GG. Aptly, the... They're just going to opt to get as much soak as possible, make sure everybody's in each lane. Want to hit that level 10 first, and then uh, be interesting to see what their engagement is. Nice dodge by Brightwing against the Spooky Hand. Nobody wants to get touched by the Spooky Hand. Now, Brightwing has the global, so she's going to be sitting in mid for a while, making sure that they get soak. Actually going to be counter-soaked by the Stukov, but Stukov's going to rotate bottom. Uh, make sure his team can actually fight against them. Rook getting crazy low, not really able to engage again until he hits a well.
<laughs> this Liorg is making it tough against the uh, Athena. So now I feel like I want to pay attention to it after every... More stacks for the Kel'Thuzad, but I want to see this Liorg. Each talent, I want to see how it works for him. He's just going to go with the level 10. Just going to go to the Cancer Demonic Invasion onto this fort with the run speed. Just going to outrun the Leoric. Here comes the Hanzo, though. Now he's going to have a tough time. Actually, he should die here, honestly. Yeah, I think he's 100% dead. Yep. So, it comes down to the point where, you know, early game, a death for a fort is completely worth it. Late game, you want to limit that a little bit more. Just because of the death timers are so long. Stukov getting so much value on top of that Diablo. And here comes the Tychus now using his... But the Grey Man, go for the throat. Finishing off the Tychus with Diablo. Sliver of health left before he taps the well and gets a full health bar. And they're chasing hard now. I mean, yeah, Joanna does not have her... Just got a drain available. So, looking at stacks, Kel'Thuzad's at 23. Tyke is actually almost done with his dash to get the extra run speed. And ultimates are all pretty uh, expected. I mean, besides the demonic invasion, of course. I mean, it was expected really with the laser build. You are going to go Demonic Evasion because there's no point in going Blackpool with all lasers. Here comes a big combo from the Kel'Thuzad hitting on the Stukov, but not able to do too much. I only did half his health pool. As surprisingly, Tychus was focusing on the Kel'Thuzad instead of the Diablo. I feel like they should definitely... Ooh, the arrow barely whiffed between the two of them. Wait, and all while doing that, Asvidan is just being... Cancer Everick. Now this is totally worth it if he dies. Just trying to get close. I'm surprised he's actually not walk Oh, he doesn't want to go next to the towers. That's why he killed that wall. He just walked right in there. Killing the keep. So now there's going to be constant pressure on the top lane. This is some um, next level. I don't even know if this is a cheese. I guess this is kind of an allowable cheese. But man, that's incredibly frustrating to play against. Kel'Thuzad, during that team fight on bottom, while Azanea was taking the keep, Kel'Thuzad was able to finish his quest. Ooh, didn't get the flip over the Hanzo. I'm surprised they, uh, they at least know that some people were top. But with these catapult pressure up here, Leoric is going to basically constantly sit up there. Ooh, Kel'Thuzad's sticking way out of place. Nice root from the Stukov, and he is just dead, dead, dead. Incoming, the neat requiring the Brightwing peel to save the Diablo because Diablo would surely would have been next. Nice on with the Hanzo arrow. Looking to chase it, but they can't go too much farther into the towers. Great, uh, Kramian honestly could have almost turned onto that Stykus. Actually, I probably would have assumed he would have done it. <laughs> Once again, these fights, it's just full laser build. And now with the laser damage from Azanan, the second dragon. Not able to be interrupted in time by the uh, Asadan. Very close though. But second dragon going to UCF. And they're actually going to opt to push the top lane. I think to try to counter the catapults that are coming out here. It's going to take him a long time to try to get to that keep lane. Or to that keep level. Full combo onto the Stukov once again. Taking to end. Tyka's walking into it. Taking one third of his health. Or leaving him with one third of his health. Oh, but the Entomb onto the Kel'Thuzad. Full combo. Actually chunking down UCF. But, look at this. They don't even care. <laughs> this set is why you scout. They've done this like five times now. Oh, really? So, yep. I mean, with that, yeah, that would definitely want to warrant some type of scouting of the other enemy team. He is still going to get that keep. Just barely. They did get a counter kill on Stukov. Kel'Thuzad, I mean, to be fair, Kel'Thuzad has been getting some good combos. Even though, you know, the, the Aslan is being super cancer. 
Looking at the damage, Kalthazad is even with Hanzo with that range, which means, and Kalthazad is pure combo driven instead of just poke damage. Right wing using the, uh, honestly, they probably didn't even need to use Bribe, but she probably has full stacks. Yeah, she, I mean, she probably had, she had three stacks there, so might as well use it. After that dragon, after the Asadan took the cube. Now, granted, catapults will not spawn in this mid lane until this fort is dead. But uh, with the next team fight, nice root. Like, once again from the Stukov, he's actually been pretty on point with that. Didn't have the rest of the team follow up from it with the Tychus or the Hanzo. But so we're probably going to be looking for Asadan, or Asadan's probably going to be looking to to cancer that mid fort to make sure we can get another keep playing. Graymane running on top of the Stukov once he's stuck in place using that uh, silence. Getting value out of his go for the throat. Nice combo onto the Joanna using the building against her. Red team has destroyed and yeah, so this is it. Essentially, Han uh, look, basically it's just Asadan taking all the forts. Oh, what? He pulled that! What a read. Too bad he didn't use his ultimate there. He doesn't have his jump available for another 15 seconds, but they were not able to follow up. I feel like Kel'Thuzad, maybe he did wasn't comfortable or he didn't have the ultimate up. He did not have the ultimate up. Otherwise, that would definitely have dead Hanzo. Dude, this Kel'Thuzad is on point! Well, I, right when I said before, you know, this game, I feel like, well, I don't know, it's hard to say. I feel like any mage at this point could have been fine for him because it's really Azadan that's uh, that's doing the strategy here. I think the downside here is that it's just that they don't have a stun for Azadan. Like, the top laner, the solo laner, does not have a stun. A Sonya would have been fine here. Like, maybe they just put Tychus up there just to burn Asadan down. But uh, I feel like really they're getting away with this because of the Leoric pick. Um, and they're not being able to stun Asadan out of his laser. A dragon arrow coming from downtown, whiffing between both of them. Once again, Kel'Thuzad... Getting those combos, Greyman trying to follow up, ends up getting the kill with Go for the Throat, which means he does have the reset there. A little bit of anti-synergy that it was all of the Emerald Wind getting pushed by the Diablo Apoc, but it doesn't matter. Greyman following up with the kills with his Executioner style, Go for the Throat, and this should be a dead Joanna as well. The last little auto attack from Greyman. So, during this 4v5, essentially, Azadan ran between top and bottom and got the dragon. And I feel like this is just a push on the top lane, getting some core damage. This is going to be a hard defense. Hard defense, if any. This is 17 to level 20. Not much you can do about it. Kel'Thuzad, once again, getting the combos. Stukov had to use his full heal. Actually trying to get the reset onto him. Almost got him again. Diablo soloing Tychus on the bot lane now with his level 16 and level 20 talents. And Dragon just chunked that. So that would have been incredibly frustrating to play against. I can probably understand if UCF Death Knights is super tilted. But, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes uh, if it sounds like... Maybe GG Gazlo have played this before. Um, uh, maybe a little bit of scouting would have helped him out for it. But, you know, not everybody has the time. It is an amateur league. Sometimes you are just playing the game to have some fun, play with some friends. Let's see what the second game we are going to is Infernal Shrines. Going to invite... Those people. Yep. 
you guys get to watch my good girl, Mika. Yeah. Sleeping in her crate. She likes her crate. Let's see, terminate draft. This time it is team two. With that last game, uh, it's just, they just couldn't interrupt. They just couldn't interrupt the Asanan. That was really came down to. They, they were trying to stick with the, the, the Leoric up top. Uh, they probably needed to go with some type of 1-1-3. One, one, Only having one interrupt available. Well, maybe the Stukov Silence can interrupt as well. Um, but once, if they were not, if they're not able to catch that Asmodan kind of sneaking in between lanes early enough, it's it's going to be pretty tough to stop. Once he gets his full demonic invasion on there with the full laser and running around the outs outskirts of the the tower range, you know, if you don't have a stun on him, you're going to have a tough time. All right, everybody's in the lobby, so we're gonna get started on game number two pretty soon. Everybody just said, why am I watching? Why is this winning? It's winning because it's hard. To, I mean, it's they just were not able to catch it early enough on what might be happening. Oops. Oh, Absol wants ban. All right. Let's get into game number two. Oh, you know, I forgot to use my other new screen. All right, so game number two, it is UCF Death Knight's map pick of Infernal Shrines. This gives first pick Gazlo GG AFK. A the first map ban or first hero ban and hero pick. Now it's hard for me to judge what Gazlo GG is going to prioritize here. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of cheeses or subtle cheeses for this map as well. You could technically do the same thing that you did just did before. There's lots of ways to get behind the towers on this map, but I can't imagine it gets away with it again. I mean, Malthia wouldn't have been any better. Sonya would probably have been okay. Gazlo GG banning out the, the Hanzo. This time, UCF banning out the Diablo that was played by Iris last time. And we are going to see the Gazlo. The first pick immediately picked Gazlo. One of Gazlo's better maps with the Infernal Shrines. Since he's a, if he able if he is able to rotate to the shrine the objective quick enough and set up his turrets, it makes it incredibly challenging to push into. So UCF is going to be looking to get some gank. They need to have a gank squad here. They need to have a maybe a tracer, if they play it, uh, maybe a Zeratul, Falstad, somebody that's going to be looking to gank this Gazlo. You do not want him setting up beforehand. Or really setting up period. So you want to they probably should be looking to get a solid two people that have solid wave clear and lane control that can play safe. And then pick two that can just that can just gank. Picking the Sonya and the Grey Main. Again, once again, another first round Grey Main. I've seen first round Grey Main in the last four uh, games. Quite surprising. Picking the Sonya this time, uh, they probably wish they would have had it last game, but Sonya's still good on camps. I think she has a kind of a tough time with Gazlo because uh, Gazlo will set up a couple turrets kind of in his own minion wave, or not really in his way minion wave, so Sonya can't heal off of it, but set turrets kind of around the edge of the minion wave and sit back, charge his laser, and just clear the wave that way, and he can stay pretty safe against the Sonya um, while also clearing the wave quick enough and since they show our pick in the gray main already that does limit their wave clear rotation ability so we're probably not going to be looking too much into the uh possible tracer but 
Kazuho GG picking up the Malfurion ETC. I'm looking to see the start of a Wombo combo. We got Mosh Pit, or we got Gravo Bomb, Malfurion, Twilight, ETC, Mosh Pit. Uh, if we see a full combo go out during this game, it will just that'll be great. And what better way to do that and then to fight over the objective, which everybody kind of has to funnel into before, uh, so that they can actually. Random task, please beat this. I the uh, UCF, they have a tough time what to ban here. I mean, really, Gazza GG can pick up anything. They decide to ban the Junkrat, which is quite surprisingly, they doesn't really follow up with too much of the kind of the wombo combo that they're being set up here. Uh, Junkrat does create a lot of displacements, um, which is quite annoying to deal with. You know, Garrosh is still available here. Wonder if they're gonna if they. I don't even think Garrosh is even useful against this team cop. Again, once again, they, they need to control the lanes at this point. They need to be able to apply pressure when they want to. Everybody in chat saying, please beat them. They don't want they don't want to encourage this kind of cheesy non-meta strats they don't want to encourage them to keep playing this because they don't want to get higher up to maybe place in the playoffs so everybody's voting against gazo gg you know everybody i i personally think it's fun as a caster i would be incredibly tilted to play against it as my team could probably attest to um that i get incredibly tilted against all specialists calls. so i can understand the frustration They did pick up Falstad. Again, I don't like the Falstad and the Gray Main is kind of eh, just because you are. I mean, they're with Joanna is going to help some of the wave control, but you're really going to want people that can solo, that can sit in the lane and be safe. Um, so that way, Falstad can kind of get those flies and get ganks. Gazo GG once again picking the Kelthazad. He was doing work. I mean, I I said in the beginning of last game that the game is really going to depend. Before I knew, the, really thought about the cheesiness of the Azodan, I was like, well, if Kel'Thuzad is going to have to land all of his combos solo because Diablo's not going to have the follow-up, and he did. He he delivered. Um, now, Kel'Thuzad's going to have an Arthas and an ETC to set up his combos. So it's going to look scarier for them on the team fights. Again, they still have full Wombo combo. We're going to have Gravo Bomb. Roots, Twilight Dream, Mosh Pit, uh, then Kel'Thuzad's R's and all of his abilities. And I, would, I wouldn't I would be surprised to have an Arthas do with Syndragosa here. I'm actually, I completely 100% expect Syndragosa. That way when they do, if they do, when they do win the, uh, win the Punisher, they will just Syndragosa down the forts. UCF. Trying to round out the comp with Lucio. Make sure that hopefully they can get some sound barriers to negate a lot of this AoE damage wombo combo potential. He helps with the rotations. He helps with false stats. And, uh, does that false stack with false stat? I don't... I think it does. Alright, oh man. And they messed up that Joanna synergy. They had it last game. Obviously, maybe Rook just doesn't want... It. Since she's playing, Joanna didn't want to be the Joanna portrait. You gotta fully embrace the Joanna. And Random Task, which I believe is a member of Average Joe's. They just played a game earlier today against UCF. Top of the leaderboards right now for Division A East. So, you know, saying that they are willingly and hoping to play against these Aznan Gazlo games. I'm sure they have quite enough strategies. So, game number two. I mean, UCF. Like, they have a. Pretty meta comp for this map. Uh, they have Sonya for the top lane. They have a Grey Main, Lucio, Joanna for any type of rotation. Gazlo can try to gank a Gaz. Uh, Falstad can try to gank a Gazlo. Falstad is a little harder to work in the rotations just because he does not have a mount. Hey, Akuma. Thanks for the host. 
for those joining in, this is game number two of UCF Death Knights versus First Pick Gazlo GGAFK. You just missed a sort of cheesy Asmodan game where he was doing a bunch of backdooring with laser build on Dragonshire and demonic minions, demonic invasion. So we got a quick little, quick, maybe a quick DC here, right off the bat. I actually do not know what the, uh... all right, so. Game number two. Let's see if UCF Death, Death Knights can redeem themselves. Beating up a Gazlo. We got Kodiaks on the Sonya. Rook on the Joanna once again. Red Conscript on the Grey Maid. Snipe on the Falstad. And Jaxter on the Le the Lucio. On the right hand side. First pick. Gazlo. GG. AFK. We got Cass on the Gazlo. Deity Minion on the Malfurion. Banshee on the Kelfazad once again. Urzik on the ETC. And Absolved on the... What's that here is called? Arthas. Holy cow. Gazzo not doing the typical top lane. They're actually going to have Arthas on the top lane going against the, the uh, Sonya. I really like that decision making. Basically adapting to the draft. You're going to see a little bit of, you know, for being a little passive here. They don't know where Gazlo is yet. They do see Kalthazad who just missed. Trying to get some early combos. But no follow ups. What's, it doesn't even matter whether they have the Gazla, whether they have the Azanan, they are going to uh, do some cheesy stuff. And with the ETC here to delay, Balsta was looking for it, didn't quite time the location of where he would be. And with that, we should see Arthas rotating up to the top lane, should get some soak. So, just going to see the normal rotation here. The Arthas versus the Sonya, which I really like the pickup of the Arthas here now, knowing what how they're going to... how Gazlo GG is going to play this map. They're just going to keep Gazlo here. As much as they can delay, Gazlo's probably going to be looking for that cheese, the same way he did on the Azadan. ETC with the easy escapes. Essentially just forcing this rotation out of him. ETC should still have his charge. Oh, there it is. Checking out the solo lane for a little bit. Sonya is doing quite well against the Arthas for now. Been to win, allowing him to keep alive. I think Sonya should be able to win this off quite easily. Actually surprised that Sonya didn't go block. Smartly with the control of the rotations so far being pretty even. Uh, Greymane being on that solo camp, it's kind of risky for him to be here by himself. They probably didn't need all three members to rotate up to the top lane just because it creates an openness for Greymane. Luckily, he gets away with it. I think I probably would have liked to see only just maybe one person help the ETC, help the Joan in the mid lane. Just in case. But, Gazlo is going to be regulated to the Merking Boy. Just one murky boy. Same with the the gray main. So far, experience levels are exactly even. Once these next uh, minion waves kind of get cleared up. Another pause. So we will go to the screen just so that if the pause lasts too long, we're not going to have people looking at the screen. Plus, you get to look at my face and you get to look at my dog. Sounds like somebody's getting a lot of lag. I need to mark the time. It is 1040. So uh, there is only a total of 10 minutes of pause time allotted for each match. Otherwise, it will have to continue. Uh, see if they need to use pauses.
So, uh, I mean, like, it's really going to come down to this first Punisher. We do have the Punisher spawning in about 20, 19 seconds. Looks like they're just going to wait for one of their teammates to kind of figure out what's going on with all the lag. I don't really want to show too much. I feel like I should have a better screen than this. What if I do screen? You don't really see anything here. We're just going to look. Yeah, it does cut off the mini map. We're just going to look at these two people. This is the other scene that I have for the end of the match, but I forgot to switch to. For, so you can actually see the stats. Actually, I could do this. There we go. Oh, it's not even even. Feels bad, man. So we are just waiting for this pause to go in. How's everybody else doing? All right, let's go over and chat of how to beat that Azadan comp that they just played against. Other than scouting them early, seeing that they might be going into this as an comp. If, let's say you got surprised by it with the comp that they ha with the comp that UCF had uh, with the Leoric they have Leoric, Joanna, Tychus, Hanzo, Stukov. Um how do you adapt to that situation? Get some discussion in chat. Look at this, nothing's been going on so far. The top damage are the two solo laners. Oh, okay, both teams are ready. So we're gonna switch just to this screen and then we're gonna get going. Three, two, one. I should really find out what the uh, hotkey for the pause. So first Punisher spawning in eight seconds. We're gonna wanna see Gazzo to start rotating down here. Again, once again, both teams have uh, pretty much the exact same experience lead. The bribe from the Falstad allowing him to take up those uh, mark camps at the same time that Gazzo did. Actually worked out quite well for him. And so we are most likely going to see Arthas and Sonya stay in this top lane. Lucio getting a little bit caught out, but he's able to just wiggle away using that wall ride to ignore any body blocks. And since this Merc camp was picked up by UCF Death Knight, it's actually going to slow the rotation from Gazlo's to be able to have a, a good setup down here. But there we go, we're going to see Gazlo get started. Opting to ignore some of that mid lane soak just to make sure that Gazlo doesn't have too much of a, a control of this map. Ooh, big combos from the Kel'Thuzad, followed up by the ETC stun. Kraymane, but they're turning on uh, ETC knowing that they just used the slide so he doesn't have an escape. Um, some good damage coming out of here. I, they were, I, once again, the Kel'Thuzad in, knocked back into the roots, able to kill, pick up the kill on the Lucio. The, it's interesting to see that the Kel'Thuzad is actually the one that's starting these team fights. I mean, the chains on the, a, a different target, and then ETC follows up. Usually you see it the other way around. ETC will slide in, Kel'Thuzad will chain and root, and then, oh, well, actually will root right on top of the ETC stun, and then chain into somebody else. But they believe enough in their Kel'Thuzad that he is going to actually call the shots on when they want to engage. And that's first Punisher for Gazzo GG. Another big follow-up from the Punisher with the Kel'Thuzad. That's basically his main job here is every time the Punisher jumps, Kel'Thuzad is going to want to sit there with the chain available and just do a combo because that guarantees a full follow-up. First Punisher now, especially with those uh, that initial kill on Lucio, the first kill of the game actually, netting them a full level lead with those bottom towers. We're seeing Sonya and Arthas kind of try to just doing that double seeking, double soaking game. Let's get Sonya off the screen here. Surprisingly, actually seeing the full static build, I, I'm assuming he's false as doing that just because he took bribe. And it charges twice as fast. Gasly looking to do some range poke with his laser. Looking at all the talents so far. Actually going the sins exposed to and the hold your ground. 
We want to make sure that Joanna can sit in that front line and try to soak up as much damage as possible. Especially if they're going for any type of wombo combo. This solo lane is just back and forth, back and forth between this uh, double soak. <clears throat> Death Knights was actually able to catch up and get about to reduce that level lead that they that uh, Gazlo had to just about a quarter level lead. So good job by them to make sure that they are not too far behind the level ten race. Both teams, I mean, they're just they're just mirroring each other at this point, taking the camps at the same time. We won last the uh, Azadan one. Literally Azadan won by himself. S Arthas is actually being quite scared of the Sonya at this point. We were looking for this mouth. We should have boop available. There it is. This is a full follow up, but 10 was reached already. But the auto attacks from everybody else was enough. But the follow up mosh pit and the combos from Kel'Thuzad. They're still not, they just hit level 10. They're not picking up quick enough. There, here comes the ultimates. But that was actually a level 9 to level 10. Uh, hitting a silence, getting silenced by the Twilight Dream and getting mosh pitted. And they still come out without any deaths. So that's, that's pretty good fortune for UCF Death Knights. It's a little bit of soak on bot lane after that kill. Kalfazad finished the first part of his quest, so he's going to have that combo out a lot sooner. I mean, this typical solo lanes, the Arthas versus Sonya is just having a hell of a time fighting each other. Gazlo is actually top of the damage being in this, this four man. But now we do have the full combo available. Yep, we did the Cinder Ghost. I called it 100%. Ooh, almost. They could have almost butt booped that uh, ETC. He's still going to follow up on him because they did use a slide. Are barely able to get the combo, but a full Gazlo Wombo. Chasing into the Arthas since he does not have the self-healing and still counter-killed on the Sonya as well. Looking for that gray main. Ball sets coming in here. Should have some burst. They don't have a healer available. So any damage that is go that goes on, the root actually messed up the combo of Kel'Thuzad. So so far, team fights have was pretty even. Uh, they were able to pick off the the ETC who got you know after he used his slide. Ooh, just so close. What that what a combo. The knockback kinda messed him up of the ETC, but the effort was there. The Sonya leap though Wasn't that didn't uh, able to have too much follow up. Arthas coming here, we should be seeing Syndra Ghost coming out of Twilight Dream hitting three four members. But luckily it was during the sound barrier, so uh, all that damage was negated. Mosh pit still available, full uh Kel'Thuzad combo is available. Can only go for the throat. <clears throat> There's the mosh pit hitting two members, the Joanna and the Grey Mane. Using the gust to, to delay it. Sonya actually, or not Sonya, Joanna just barely got out. The combo kill onto the Gazlo. Or not combo, counter kill onto the Gazlo. Once again, the knockback from the ETC, anti synergizing with his team. But I think Sonya's 100% dead. Yep. So that's second Punisher. So that's second Punisher going for first pick Gazlo GG. These fights have kind of been going back and forth, honestly. Here comes the combo from the Kel'Thuzad. And easy pick after that Punisher jumps. I'm actually quite surprised Kel'Thuzad is not prepping the wall with a... Um, not prepping the wall with a chain, waiting for the Punisher to jump, knowing because as soon as the Punisher gets close to a wall, you know, they're going to jump. I mean, maybe... Ooh, getting close. Maybe he thinks that they would just not bait the jump over, and uh, I don't need... But then you can't do any damage. Then you're essentially delaying damage for four seconds, and I think that's kind of worth it, too. But either way, I mean, it doesn't matter what they do, because it's working. So, you know, what do I know? Don't listen to me.
So, both teams deciding to go for the land clear. So this is one of the downsides of the Falstad boy. The one of the downsides of the Falstad build here is not having the boomerang. Um, is just severely, severely weakens his uh, wave clear potential. He's actually going for full lightning build, hoping to stay on top of Peel, but the gray main barely gets out, goes into the, and able to chase on top of the Kel'Thuzad to get that kill, followed up with the Malfurion help with the Falstad. He just, he was able to dive and just barely got the Lucio sound barrier, allowing him to uh, really push into that. Ooh, the double bomb. Creating some space for the Gazla to run away. Ooh, we're going to see the false dead fly. Looking for that bribe. Ding, ding, ding. Arthas. Oh, does he have barrel roll? There it goes. Doesn't quite get over the wall. They're still chasing. They're still chasing. They don't want him to get away for it for free. And he does. So that gives how many stacks? So it's 35 divided by 5, 7 stacks. Get out of here, Ember. Get out of here. Get out of here. How do I even... Oh, I, I didn't put myself as busy. Feels bad, man. Health is out looking for the pull. Almost. He believed though. He believed. That's commitment. Level 16 not quite reached yet for UCF Death Knights, but they're going to be looking onto this. There's knockback. This is a f such a quickly dead Arthas. And great timing for UCF as well, since that uh, Punisher is just about to spawn. But that's not good if they get a counter kill on the Grey Main. Nice sound barrier. Looking for that mosh pit, didn't quite uh, use it fast enough, knowing that they do have uh, Gus to mock him away. Barely save that gray main. So this should give UCF a good couple first um, monsters taken on this objective. This Banshee, Banshee, so patient. So patient with this. Waiting for the gray main to come in. Wait. He did that a little too early. Another Sonya with the leap, the double stun. <clears throat> Almost picked up that Gazlo, but not quite. Arthas is alive now. They didn't get an, enough of a lead. They weren't able to pick up another kill, which is what they were trying to do. Chain those deaths to get available. Now we should see Sandra Ghost are coming out, and we're going to see Mosh, but the ETC is lining up for it. Gazzo is trying to get in position. There's a Mosh pit, hits only two people, immediately interrupted. Gravel Bomb grabbing two of them with the gust to pull them away. But it doesn't matter, the turrets were actually to focus enough onto the Sonya to get him killed. Counter kill on the ETC, and Kramer is just going in. Trying to use that e Lucio to allow him to dive out of it. And these fights are just so fiesta. Look at these turrets, the tur turrets, 26 to 26 minions. Still 4 alive, 4 to 4. Trying to get those taps and coming back in. I mean, Arthas does not have... Nice Twilight Dream hitting the Lucio. Lucio has been stunned forever, but Falstad really wanted that Gazlo. Oh, and the Death Coil able to finish off the Lucio at the last second. Try to, what is this going on? A two for two once again. Punisher is alive though. At least there's no Kel'Thuzad follow up for when the Punisher jumps. Falstad still might die. No, oh, Arthas did not go for it. Did not have that much too, too much mana. All right, well, it is 10 to 10 kills. Experience leads are exactly the same. However, three Punishers have gone for Gazlo GG so far. But Falstad getting picked up by the ETC and the, the Arthas. Messing up that 10 for 10 kills. Alright, backing off of that Punisher. Noted that they just got Kel'Thuzad to res. Kel'Thuzad wants to get those Falakrides up so that he can res immediately after he gets dived upon. 
surprisingly, so there's been three Punishers. That was the first fort that died at 16 minutes into the game. That's the type of game this is. About three quarters of a level lead. Gazzo doing specialist things, just pushing the lane. Since he saw three members of UCF in the mid lane. Red team has destroyed a fort. See if Falstead's going to do a cheeky play with his bribe. He only has one stack, so never mind. Right now, Gazlo is just looking for that level 20. They have about a half a level lead. Honestly, we still haven't seen... I mean, like, that last fight was a pretty good combo. It wasn't exactly perfect like I would like it to be, but it was close enough. Sindragosa comes in, then the ETC comes in with the Mosh and the Gravo Bomb. The sound barriers have been on point, though. The fact that Lucio has not been hit by any type of Mosh to prevent sound barrier... Um, it's allowing his team to really stay in the fight. If he hasn't landed some of these sound barriers, it would have been a GG. But this Sonya is 100% dead. Actually, no, because he has Leap. No. 70 seconds. Probably worth it for them to make sure that he does not die for the next fight. I mean, he'll definitely have Leap up by the next Punisher. But they're going to have somebody up here to clear this stuff. They, they actually lost more forts outside of the Punisher uh, than they did during the Punisher. Looking to push down here. They're going to get surrounded here. Cinder goes to coming in from the backside, slow in. Oh, well, what happened to my mouse there? Sonya's getting picked up. There's no leap now since they were used, and Sonya got killed right away. Now Graymane. Nice Twilight Dream once the Grammy dived in. He does have his roll. There it goes. And so that does split up the team a little bit. Actually provided space for the rest of UCF to kind of run away. Lucio's just going to run the Grammy out of here. Ooh, but Rook is actually dead because of the body blocks. Solid body blocks from the ETC. Slowing him down while he has the um, trade up. I'm surprised Falsta did not use Gust during that. But, you know... Yeah, but like during all that, I mean, they took top fort. Or Gazlo took top fort. Next time Kel'Thuzad gets killed, he will be able to res immediately. Still, I mean, so two forts were taken. Two forts were taken outside of the Punisher phase. But now if, if it continues where Gazlo gets the next Punisher... Uh, this is going to be pushing onto a keep, and it's not going to look good for UCF. Level 20's out. We got Blink. The reset on the Fissure. The Root on the Syndragosa, ensuring that they will definitely get the combos now. And then the Miniature Black Hole. These team fights are going to be hectic. And they're actually just going to give this Punisher up because John had just recently rezzed probably about 20 seconds ago. I don't think I enjoy this. I feel like they needed to fight at some point because if they just give up this Punisher, I mean, that guarantees a keep kill. And if they lose anybody like they have been losing them during after the Punisher jumps, then that's going to guarantee game. So I feel like I would rather fight over the actual objective where it can kind of go your way if you if it... You know, if it plays right, versus giving them a Punisher and it guaranteeing that it probably will not go your way. But they're not even pushing with this. Why are they? Why is Gazlo scared? Push with this for the win. So confused. The camps really scare them off. Coming out to this Punisher late, already lost half his health and the first leap. Granted, Sonya actually still. It doesn't matter. They come in late. They will still. Get the engage on them. Nice Twilight Dream. Picking up the Malfurion though. No, still no Kel'Thuzad. Kazlo Gravel Bomb pulling the Sonya into her death. Kel'Thuzad saying, it's okay guys. I got that camp on the bot lane. We can sure, sure win now. Falstad taking a beating from the Punishers. They get the keep, but I feel like if they had Kel'Thuzad there, that was literally game. Because uh, he would have been able to follow up with all of that. 
So I'm not quite sure on that call from Gazza GG. We did see the global fissure coming in. Why use Gus super long CD? Yeah, I know. I agree in that bottom lane. It's it's tough, but so UCF get a little bit of a break. Oh, okay. Sorry. You see, I'm getting a little bit of a break there. With the Kelsad not being available, not being in that team fight. I mean, they're both just gonna play the PVE game for now for a little bit. But looking at, I mean, I didn't actually look at the level 20s from. UCF Death Knights. This has been a 21 minute game. Four Punishers have gone to the side of First Pick Gazo GG. So we're looking for the team fight though. But they decide not to engage on it. It's kind of fighting over nothing. Didn't have quite the engagement that they wanted to. But just in case they might have rotated poorly. Actually, I really like this. UCF is really rotating real safe all over the place. Did they see the Malfurion in there? I don't think they saw him. Okay, there it is. Also trying to be anno as annoying as possible with his fly. This thing, like, I mean, I agree, like, you want the bribe, but you get so much of it from your wave clear. Having the boomerang gives you more wave clear, which gives you more bribe stacks, and, you know, allows if you're going to go into Mighty Gust, or if you're going to go into Epic Mount, um, allows your global to be a little bit more potent. It actually takes false tag quite a long time to clear. I mean, UCF, give it to him. Even though they've been losing these punishers, UCF has been really controlling these Merc lands with that bribe and the rotations. So, I mean, I'll have to give it to them that. They've been staying in this game for a long time. It's just such a back and forth. Everybody's just kind of running around waiting for that next punisher to start. start. I mean, the bottom lane is open. Like, it's it's still technically anybody's game. Core's still alive. If if UCF get a good team fight on this shrine, I mean, they can still win. Especially this bottom one. They really want this bottom one. This pushes bottom keep. Again, if they get any key kills, the death timers are long enough now where a team fight here basically wins the game. They're playing the safe. Like, this is going to... I'm going to... Close the talents here, just because this is going to be the team fight to watch. Gazzo setting up. Sonya's going to be looking for the leap. We're going to be watching for the false side on the flank for the the gust. Sonya, I, I imagine, is going to be looking for the jump onto the Kelphazad or the Gazlo. Here comes in initiation from the Joanna. Graeme is trying to look for the flank on the side to jump on top of somebody. But he's in there by himself, and he gets immediately blown up. That is not what you wanted to happen. Getting getting visioned by the Gazlo turret. So unfortunately, the Lucio just sound burying nobody but himself. And Joanna is surely trying to stay alive for as long as he could with the Indestructible. But it's just a little bit. They got, they got too hesitant. Got scared off by the Gazlo turret, unfortunately. Honestly, like I feel like they could have tried to do something cheeky with the false dad fly into a an aggressive gust into the team into a Joanna stun and blessed shield and try to blow up the Malfurion before the silence happens. Unfortunately, you will probably end up dying to grab a bomb after that, so it's tough. So that's two dead. Joanna's still uh, dead for another thirty seconds. Kalthazad looking for a push. Sonya's having a tough time. The rooted from the the Arthas, double rooted from the Punisher, and then stunned by the Grava Bomb. Still alive because of the sound barrier. Actually, that was a really good interrupt from the Lucio on that mosh pit. Kel'Thuzad gonna die, but not without bringing two people by himself because of even after he got jumped, his combo still goes off completely and gets a reset on both Greymane and Sonya. And that's finally going to spell the game for first pick Gazza GG. 
and what a game. That was pretty back and forth, honestly. Oh, wait, I can do this thing. There you go. Now it's lined up. Yeah, so looking at the stats here, Gazlo actually having top damage by a good margin, followed by Arthas. That is it. That's congratulations to first pick Gazlo GG AFK uh, with the two game domination against UCF Death Knights. Having some pretty crazy games, honestly, and uh, pretty some crazy strategies. Sounds like they are pretty consistent with these crazy strategies. So for any teams looking forward to facing them next week, uh, definitely pay attention to what they're doing. Make sure you can either draft around it or draft to counter it uh, just in case they um, pick it when they might be looking to pick meta, but either way, that is going to be it for me.